Uh, my name is Steve Fender. I'm from Fender's Fish Hatchery. We're, sent, we're located here in Ohio. And uh, I'm doing a video today on the Coenders uh, double or single diaphragm windmill compressor. I've done a video already on how to troubleshoot these. Now I'm going to do a video on how to disassemble and rebuild it. So i um, going to need some simple tools. Uh, the torch I have over here, going to need a torch to cut the bearings off with. Um, we got to take the, the plate off the top. Now there's two different styles of the, double, or the single diaphragm. One has this check valve assembly on the top. The other older style has it underneath here. Before I take this apart, I'm going to use the stability of the compressor housing to get this nut off. So I like to use an impact. Because it's probably been in there for 20 years. Most of these units will last about 17 years before they need to be rebuilt. Some a little lot less, very seldom ever longer. But uh, so I take that nut out and that's just, part of this is also part of your airflow. So when this compressor is working, this diaphragm is going to take out, will push air up through this assembly, through an airline, through an elbow over in here. Now when they built these things originally, they had used uh, plastic elbows. And the problem with the plastic elbows versus the old brass ones like this is over time, those, the sun will cook those things and they don't work anymore. Um, they break, what happens. So when you go to take the thing apart, they're gonna be broken. And just like this one here, somebody else taking it apart, now it's broke. So if you got those plastic elbows like that in there, what I found the best thing to do, if you can't get it out, Take a drill bit and keep working up on sides until you drill that plastic out and all you have is the plastic threads inside. And you want to try to take a pick and pick them out or take a torch and melt them because if you have any of the, the shavings go down in and it falls down in the bottom and it potentially could plug up the other end where your air comes out. These have the air coming out of that nipple down there. If you get shavings down there, it could plug that up. So you want to try to drill that out slowly, use a, use a, a decent sized bit pull the shavings out or even hang it upside down so you pull the shavings and drill it until you get down to you used to have threads left and then you can like say take a torch take a pick and pick them out if you get them down in blow in there until you finally get those all out then that's that's where the air travels so put brass fittings back in and it's going to last another 17 years so when I take this out inside there you're going to find a, a, a check valve and that's the check valve. Um, still probably works, but they're worn out, they're old. So basically, like I said, I just wanted to leave that plate on here to give me a way to hold it steady while I take this out. I'm just going to put it back in here for now, finger tight, just to store it. So next thing I want to do, take this plate off. These are half inch, 12, half inch. Um, use a socket half inch, they're uh, uh, 5 16 So yank these out, all out. Now I'm doing this video to benefit the do-it-yourselfers that have the tools and the desire to do these things. It's not that it's that difficult, but you do have to have those certain tools. And a torch is going to be really necessary in this situation too. So these lids, once you take the bolts out, they're still on tight. You got to get that underneath. Does that diaphragm will just kind of glue itself fast. Pop it off, simple as that, it's off. Okay. So that's your lid. That's where the air goes up through with that check valve inside. Then here is the disc. This has four screws in it. Um, the way this thing works, as that crank turns, it pushes this up and down and moves that. And what happens to wear these things out is the uh, diaphragm is rubber and it'll crack. Also, the check valve will uh, sometimes go bad too. This has got debris down there and it probably was holding over. So I have um, customers that would rather not rebuild them themselves. They'd rather have me do it. So what I'll do is I'll get, I'll have rebuilt units and they can come in and exchange their unit for a core for a freshly rebuilt one. So these are some that have been turned in. So most of these have a, a screw head in them, a screw type slot in the uh, machine screw. So they typically come out pretty nice. Some will have an Allen wrench type head. <clears throat> so I got these guys out, set them aside, keep them because they don't come in the rebuilt kit. And then you can just pretty much just peel that off like that. 
and save that disc also. So you're going to need to keep that. The uh, diaphragm, this is the old style. It was kind of a two-piece deal that they had. So it's, it's scrap. It's done. <clears throat> All right. Next, I'm going to take some bolts loose. I'm going to take the front, uh, this bearing retainer, take those out first. And essentially all I'm doing is I'm going to take the holders loose, get it loose to where I get in there with the torch, I can cut the rest of it out. And you may want to save these. When I put new units back together, all the bolts that go back in are new. So I like to just put all new stuff in. Makes it look new, looks, looks better. Just a better looking job. Just get that. That's going to go in the scrap. Don't hit the end of the shaft. If you smack that with a hammer at the end of the shaft, these shafts are not hardened. You'll mushroom. And then you got to file that down to get the bearing to go back on when you put it back on. Then next, I'm going to take these three out to take the, the uh, um, piston assembly out. that out. Make sure when you take it apart that this is still tight. I've had a few that were loose. This is a jam nut. This assembly is set up to where you can adjust this piston up and down a little bit. Um, when they machine these things, put them together, they have that in there just for the reason that if you would have to change crankshafts and it changes the throw a little bit, you can adjust this up or down because that has to come up as far as it can without actually coming in contact with this. If it goes up too far and hits that, it'll place bindage and eventually crack this out or just stall it out altogether. And if it's too low, you're not going to get the compression you need. So set this aside. Then you got, there's one more plate in behind there you want to get out or loosen up, take the bolts out. Not sure what we would have done without what we done without the cordless pro, cordless tools we got today. This makes life so much easier. Okay, so now I got that whole shaft loose, and if you look down inside, you see all that's loose in there. The bearing retainers, all that stuff loose. The bolts are all loose. This whole shaft is floppy. Now, next thing I'm going to do, these shafts come back out through this way. I'm going to cut this bearing off, so I'm going to position it so it stays in one place for me, just kind of support it there, so I want to keep this thing rotated up, and now when you cut these things out, you use a torch, make sure you know what you're doing, you got to cut it so you just, all you're doing is washing that bearing off there, so I'm going to cut this off so it falls out of the way, also keep in mind, make sure you get gloves, when you cut in those bearings, if that front bearing still has oil in it, or grease, it'll flare up. So make sure you got gloves on or you may not have any hair in your arms and hands for a little while. So they will flare up, so be careful with that. And this is one of these things where you want to make sure if you do it or you have somebody do it, they know what they're doing with the torch. Uh, if you do it right, you can take these bearings off without doing too much damage to the crankshaft or none at all if you're really good at it. There we go, now we're ready. Okay, I'm just getting rid of that retainer. I'll take the outside off first. Cut it in half. Now this old bearing was dried out, so there was no oil anymore to flare up. So the outside race is off. Get the ball bearings, get them out of my way. Now all I got left is the inside race. So if you heat it up right, you can wash it right off the shaft. Okay, cut one side. 
Okay, we're going to see how that looks. That looks like it's pretty good. Now, one thing, I, I'll try it, make sure it's cut clean enough. But if you take this thing, you don't want to hit the hammer, like I said earlier. What I do a lot of times is go like this. And see that, that slid off there. And you take a hammer and tap it. There. Now, what I got when I cut that off, you can see I got pretty much all of it cut off like that. Assembly slides right out. Now, you can see this is where the surface was where the bearing is at. You can see the little notches here where the set screws are set in, and I didn't scar the shaft at all. So now, the problem with this one, that bearing had went bad. That's why I got the flopping in there. So over time, those bearings would run out of oil, and they'll just wear out, and they come apart. So now, I'm going to clamp it in here. Makes it a lot easier to work on now. Get the flammables out of the way. Move this out of the way. Move that stuff all out. Okay, now I'm going to cut this off. See how that cut? Probably have to make another cut. See if it'll slide. It's gonna slide off. So I didn't have to cut on both sides so much as I just cut a little bit on each side enough to take the uh, strength out of that bearing race and it's all nice and clean there so just clamp it back in there I'll just take it off the rest of the way there you can see how I cut both sides there now if you want to rotate it around and cut it in half entirely you can I just try to just if you do it right that metal heats up quicker than this metal does because it's not attached. It's slid on, but it's not attached. So you heat this metal up, get it to where it's melting, blow that all out without getting this hot enough to where it starts to melt. Now the reason you got to cut these things off, when you slide these bearings back on and rebuilt this thing, you've got just a couple thousands to play with. And the big thing is you run those set screws down in, that's enough to dimple that metal enough that it makes it difficult to move that off. Plus, they rust. So you get a little bit of surface rust in there and that's enough to seize that bearing up so it won't come back off just by simply pulling it off. So when you put this thing back together, you're going to want to, before you take it put it together, emery cloth and file and clean it up real good. And if you happen to burn through a little tiny spot, just a little dimple is not a big deal. I've done it before and what I do is I'll typically take and do a spot of weld, sand it and file it until I get it back perfect ground again. It wouldn't even be entirely necessary, but I like to make stuff nice and pretty, make it look good again. Now, this bearing, real dry, probably doesn't have any oil on it either. <clears throat> so we'll count, cut it off again. Pay attention, don't get burnt. Cut that race off the outside. See that flare up like that? Had a little bit of oil left in it yet. That's enough to make it flare up when you hit that torch. Okay, so now I'm ready to cut that bearing race off again. Okay, I'm going to rotate this around a little bit, and I'm going to have Adam, my son-in-law and cameraman, come around to the other side and see if we can't get a little bit of a shot of how I'm actually melting this away. So with this one, you got to pretty much melt it off this way. 
And you'll see, it'll make a black spot. That's where, see that black spot up here? That's the uh, crankshaft where it's not quite hot enough to melt. So I'm just, all I'm doing is washing that bearing off. Now I got enough of it off there that's gonna lose strength. And of course, it's gonna get hot enough that it'll stretch to where it swells where it'll, it should come off anyhow. Get this clamped up good. See him moving? So is my piece of my crank and my vice here. Put that back up. Just coming off both sideways. There, finally, a little bullheaded. So, no cuts with the torch. I scarred it here a little bit on here. We'll get emery cloth once this thing cools down. I didn't scar it enough, it's gonna hurt anything. I can take emery cloth, sand it, clean it up, see where my imperfections are, and I'll hit that, those divots with the file, knock them down. When I get done cleaning it and prepping it, I'll be able to take the bearings, slide them on smoothly, nice and smooth. Now, if you take this, your, your machine, your, your unit apart, and these races are wobbly and, and worn, you'll find out that the crankshaft is worn also you might also throw the crankshaft away. You gotta have this conditioned crankshaft so when you slide the bearings on, they slide on smooth and snug and then you can tighten them down good. If they're loose and wobble, then that, when you put the thing back in service and it spins for a year or two, it'll work those bearings loose and it'll waller the shaft out even more and possibly break something ma more major in your unit. So what we're gonna do is, I got this apart, prep this. I send, what I do is I send these units out or sandblast them myself, depending on if I got time. Sandblast them down and good and clean. Send them to the powder coating company, have them powder coated. And when I get them back, then I assemble them with new bearings, a new diaphragm kit. And um, essentially it's a, it's a new unit ready to go. I put in, uh, clean up the brass fitting. I put a new brass fitting in here, an elbow, and another one in the lid, like we talked earlier. And when somebody needs a unit like this, they can come down, trade their core in, and they're ready to go. Now, um, we'll take this thing and get it sandblasted and get it ready, and then we'll continue this video when I get everything back where I can put this back as a new unit.